Now we're talking about ions, and they're going to be connected to other solutions. So one of the things we need to think about is going to be what's going to happen once we unfreeze time and let things progress, and determine what that's going to do to our ability to measure potentials, and if it might make potentials of its own. Now suppose we take a sodium chloride solution that you see here, where we have our sodium ions and our chloride ions, and they're in this range right here. And somehow we just magically open up this valve and now it's in direct contact with water. And we're going to assume that there wasn't any turbulent flow going on there either. So we just open it up and now things are allowed to happen. Well, we know that there's going to be a diffusion constant, but we also know that the charge that we have on these ions is going to matter, especially if we have them between two electrodes. So if we were to pull up the mobility information for sodium ion, we find that it's got 5.19 times 10 to the negative 8 meter squared per second per volt. For chloride, you can see it's a larger number. In other words, it's going to be moving more area, more distance, in the same amount of time for the same amount of potential that we have on it. So always pay attention to your units because that'll help you keep track of what we're talking about. But yeah, it's going to be moving faster for the chloride ion than for the sodium ion. And in fact, once we unfreeze our time a little bit, we're going to see that we're going to have a region that's going to have a slight negative charge because we have more Cl minuses there. We're going to have a region that's going to have a slight plus charge because it's going to have more sodium ions there. And so as a result, we're going to end up having a dilayer form. Now, if we're trying to measure potentials between two electrodes, and now all of a sudden we've got two different regions of charge in the middle, that's going to really impede our ability to do that. And it's probably not going to be as big of an effect as we're trying to measure, but it's going to be a big enough effect that it's probably going to entangle and start adding some error to the measurement. Now if we look at a couple of actual values, just to get a feel for how big of an effect we're talking about, the junction potential, that's what we're going to refer to this, when we have the junction between two solutions, what potential forms? If I have 0.1 molar sodium chloride and the same strength of uh, KCl, you can see that my potential is going to be negative 0.2 I'm sorry, 6.4 millivolts. So back on the voltage scale, we're at 0 0.0064. Now, that means that the positive, uh, so yeah, just look at the note here. A positive sign means the right side of the junction, as drawn up there, is going to be positive with respect to the left side. So it's telling us something about the mobility of our ions when they're faced with each other. Okay, if I take something like KCl and crank up the concentration a bit, while keeping the sodium chloride, you can see that it is possible to start balancing the junction potential a little bit, but it takes a really active amount of control and some pretty big concentrations. And of course, if we go to more concentrated solutions, we end up having a bigger junction potential start forming than we just had. Now, if we go to something like this set, you can see that we have a really big junction potential between 0.1 molar HCl and 0.1 molar KCl. Now, notice, Positive sign means the right side of the junction is becoming positive. In other words, if you want to think of it like this, we're saying that the ions migrating this way. H plus is going much faster than Cl minus. And that probably shouldn't surprise us because H plus is just going to be a little proton with a full size charge. Chloride is going to be a big ion with a negative one charge, but it's going to be uh, bashing into a lot more ions in the way, and that's going to slow its migration down significantly. We know that H plus has a much faster diffusion than Cl minus. And that's part of the reason that we see such a big junction potential for that. But also notice that, that if we switch this back to the voltage scale, that would be 0.027 volts. And with a lot of the values we're seeing for these things, they tend to be in the tenths place or maybe even the ones place. I'm oh, sorry, the hundredths place and the tens place we're talking about the value. So, I mean, this is going to be a pretty significant value compared to any of our standard potentials. So this is going to have a really big effect. Now, junction potentials, let me get rid of the ink. Like we just saw, the junction potentials are typically going to be a couple of millivolts at most, sometimes even smaller. But a pH meter measuring something, remember, it's actually doing an electrochemical measurement and converting that into pH which we then convert into concentration of H+. The pH meter can be knocked off by about half a pH unit for a large junction potential. For a smaller junction potential, it won't be that big of an effect. 
so we want to try to keep our junction potentials minimized. Another reason to be co concerned about keeping junction potentials small, we usually don't know how big they are. And it's not going to be easy to just measure these things in a normal system that we're working with. Typically what you do is you set it up so that you have the exact same solution on each side, and then you look at what uh, difference forms by having a slightly different concentration on both sides, and then there's a whole lot of other entanglement that you have to pick through. And that's not usually what you're trying to do. You're usually just trying to measure a pH in a solution or a concentration of an ion in a solution. So you don't want to have to go through that much background work just to do a quick, simple measurement. So our advice that we usually give is to stay as dilute as we can whenever it's possible. Also, when you're doing your calibration steps on your pH meter or your ion detection scheme, make sure that you're keeping track of things. And if you start spotting weirdness pop up, and when I say weirdness, usually what I mean is that it's not calibrating the way that you expect it to. But if you see that weirdness, stop, check what's going on, you know, recognize that it might be a junction potential, and decide if this is the best way to do the measurement or not. And if so, come up with some schemes to try to get your solution to be more dilute, while still having the detection limit that you need in order to see the species that you're after. But usually if you spot a junction potential problem, it probably means a good time to go for some sort of a titration approach or a colorimetric approach or just some other trick that you can use.